Ambernick may have come a long way, but the 353P is one of the hardest devices I've ever had to work on. We need to remove the four screws on the back, so let's get to doing that now. I was really impressed with the repairability of the 351 MP I used to have, so I'm really hoping that this one is similar in that regard. Unfortunately, the screwdriver I started with wasn't correct. I needed to use my 1 16th Allen key to get the rest of them out. Not a big deal, but I kind of wish they had just used regular Phillips screws in the back here. I'm kind of wondering if there's any screws under these little back pads here, but I don't think that's the case. With the four screws out of the way, we encounter the biggest problem with assembling this unit. The clips on the 353P are extremely strong and it's very difficult to get them to unlock. I started up by the trigger area, but I wasn't having any luck and I actually damaged a lot of my tools trying to get it open. The quality of the plastic is really good though and I wasn't worried about nicking it by going along this opening here with this tool. One company I've been really impressed with the repairability on their device was the Retroid Pocket 3. It was very easy to get it open and the back clips are extremely durable. After failing to open the side, I went to the top to try to see if I could get it open up here and I did make a little bit of progress loosening some of these clips. Out of every device and controller I've opened, this unit is by far the hardest because of these clips. Once you get the thing open a little bit, you can usually slide your tool along and open a couple clips in one go. Once you've got a decent amount of progress up on the top, you can start with the other side and work your way along. It's pretty interesting to see how Anne Burnick's design has changed over the years on their products. I do really wish this was a lot easier to open because already I wouldn't recommend this to quite a lot of people. I did manage to finally get some of the side open, so just worked this tool along here and managed to get the other clips open near the bottom. Once the other side was open, I worked my way towards the bottom and managed to get that open as well. The rest of the top opened up easy once the bottom was already open. Be extra careful when you're removing the back panel that you don't lift it up too quick. It's still attached to the battery. You have to unplug that before you fully lift it away. Be careful not to use any metal tools on your unit until you remove the battery, otherwise you can short circuit your device. This should be pretty easy to get out, just use your fingers to pinch the sides and then pull straight up. There's not much room for your finger to kind of fit in there with the trigger though, so it might be a little difficult to position your hand to pull it out. Here's a close-up of the battery if you're interested in what they were using. The speakers on Ambernick units are always pretty easy to take out, so let's take those out next. All we have to do is just pinch the sides of these plugs and pull straight out, and they should just pop straight out. Do the same thing with the other speaker on the other side. These speakers sit on little rails, so all we have to do is just pull them up and they should come right out. These are way looser than the 351 MP speakers, but they look very similar in design. They're definitely different though. You can also use a pair of plastic needle nose pliers to pull these out if you don't want to use your fingers or if they're a little stuck. All the ribbon cables will have to be unplugged anyways, so if you want to take a few of those out, or all of them, you can do that now. These ones here just flip up and they're unlocked. If you find that you lose track of what goes where, take pictures as you go along, it never hurts to look back. Or you can always pause this guide as you go along. If you don't have a plastic tool like the one I had, you can always use your fingernail to unlock these. These little clips are pretty strong, so I wouldn't worry about breaking them. Let's take out these triggers next. There's two screws on each and they should be pretty easy to remove past then. These top parts slide off pretty easy. Make sure when you pull all these off that you're separating them so you know which one goes on each side. You also need to unlock the two ribbon cables here. You don't need to remove it because it'll just pull out when you lift up the little triggers. Because the ribbon cable lock is underneath the little ribbon here on the inside, you might want to use a little plastic tool or you can probably reach your fingernail under there just to unlock it. Ribbon cables are probably one of the more sensitive parts of the unit, so just be careful when you're around them that you don't scratch them with anything. 
so you don't get the screws mixed up as you're disassembling the unit, you can always put them on a piece of paper and then just write underneath where they go as you're going along. I'm pretty impressed with the build quality of the motherboard itself and a lot of these other parts on the inside, Ambernick has come a long way since their old units. We can remove these joysticks next, there's only two screws on each of them, just a Phillips screw and there's the ribbon cable of course, but we should have already removed that by now. These joysticks look very similar to the ones that were in the 351 MP. They have a board soldered to the bottom, so you can't really replace them with a switch joystick. Be careful not to drop any screws underneath the motherboard like I just did. I removed a few screws on the motherboard on this side, but you don't have to, you can just remove the other joystick first. If you look on the bottom of the joysticks, they actually say RG350M key V10, so they've definitely been using this one for quite a while. The two joysticks in my unit were actually timestamped from 2019. With the two joysticks out, make sure to remove the screws from the motherboard next. There's quite a few of them, so just make sure you get them all out before you start trying to lift up the board. This would also be a really good time to remove your micro SD card before we start lifting up the motherboard. And before we lift up anything else, there are two more ribbon cables we need to remove. There's one here for the screen, and I'm not sure what this other one's for. The Wi-Fi antenna is something we also need to remove. They did a really stupid design here with the Wi-Fi antenna. They decided to glue it to the outside wall, and it's right behind this little post. If you plan on swapping shells, you'll likely have to take a heat gun to this and peel it off a little at a time. That post is probably going to get in your way though, so that's going to be a hell of a time. Let's get those two ribbon cables out of the way. All we have to do is just flip them up and they're good to go. Be careful with this little ribbon lock, it's a lot more breakable than the other ones. Wiggle the ribbon cable back and forth until you can get it out. If you're having trouble getting this out, you can always use something like a small plastic tool or if you have something soft like a small q-tip, that might even be better. The shell being of course made of hard plastic makes it extremely difficult to get out. This 3.5mm headphone jack is something that you're going to have to probably bend the shell to get out. I probably wouldn't bend it from the other side as there's a lot of small switches and the other adapters, the HDMI cable, they're a lot more delicate than this one so I'd probably start with the bottom first. Make sure you don't leave the 3.5mm headphone jack stopped on something like I just did. You have to pull it all the way out because you don't want it putting pressure on the solder. Be careful when you're lifting out the board that you don't break any of these little switches up here at the top. And be careful with the ribbon cable as you're pulling it out that it doesn't get stuck. I had to push mine down just to get it through there. The little ribbon cable might be a little harder to get out than the big one. You might have to wiggle it back and forth until you get some space then you should be able to pull it through. There's probably not much they could have done with the design here, but if it's unlocked you can probably just lift it up like this and it should come right off. And there we go, the board's finally out. The membranes, all you have to do is just lift them off the little posts here and the buttons you can just flip the console over and just pop them out. If you don't want the Nintendo style layout to the buttons here, you can swap them around. They're not proprietary, so you can move them around as you want. You can remove the screen if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. Just the way that they've glued it to the device itself, it's not going to come off pretty and it's probably going to wreck the panel. The antenna will actually come off as well, but you need to heat that up and then peel that off little by little trying to get around the post here. It's quite a pain. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments.